Inspired by the real-life space shuttle and many of the fascinating NASA concept designs, I built a super heavy version with the ambitious goal of taking passengers to the moon. Unlike the traditional space shuttles that relied on external systems like solid rocket boosters and large fuel tanks to reach space, this design would be a single stage to orbit vehicle. Instead of needing a separate launch system, the hyperjet engines would propel the shuttle high enough into the atmosphere, then the engines would be cycled to activate the rocket mode for a long burn, hopefully achieving orbit. From there, the moon would be within reach as our destination. Since this is a cargo shuttle, there would need to be many large storage bays for delivering payloads to the lunar surface. And of course, aesthetics matter. This had to be very impressive and cool looking, which kind of goes without saying when it comes to space related ships, they are almost always cool looking. The design underwent many iterations. In fact, it was 26 times in total. And these changes in general aim to optimize the lift, to thrust, and of course the general appearance. And this was the final version that we come up with. It was absolutely huge. It's probably one of the biggest space shuttle looking designs in KSP2 thus far. It is about double the length of the real life shuttle, which is ridiculous. And it has 75 engines in total, with 74 being the Rapier hybrid engines, and one normal engine for good measure. Now, from testing, I had to add some extra landing gears as the shuttle's sheer mass of about 1,500 tons caused it to crush itself. And of course, a lot of struts were needed for stability. Now, to actually launch, I only activated a couple of engines, and the reason why is because of the sheer number of air-breathing engines require a lot of air. And because we don't have that many air intakes to supply them the air, at the start you pretty much need to pick up some speed, get the air inflow coming, and then once you're around, I don't know, 20, 30 meters per second, then you activate the rest of the engines and you're good to go. Now to actually get lift off, you have to fly beyond the runway, <laughs> which is not safe to do in real life. In this case, it's due to the lack of frontal lift, and the thrust as well is, is not very good compared to the uh, mass. Then comes the steady climb into the upper atmosphere and you'll notice that the shuttle does slow down quite a lot but once you get to a point where you angle around 10 or so degrees you'll accelerate very very fast in the thin part of the atmosphere. But I stuffed up big time. The flight was taking a very very long time well, I stopped paying attention basically, <laughs> and I think I ended up doing something else and then came back and inevitably, when you're not paying attention to a rocket, things go very, very wrong. <laughs> we were no longer ascending, but falling. Yes, <laughs> we uh, didn't look very good. This wasted quite a lot of fuel, so I had to adjust the shuttle angle of attack in hopes that we'd stop falling, but I don't think it worked. So I had to revert the flight to a previous point when we were flying, but I think we had still wasted a bit of fuel at that point as well. So look, overall, even though this was a big hiccup, the passengers, they don't care. They, they either do or die. So we're on our way to the moon and you will notice that the shuttle would veer left and right a little, but it, it does seem to remain in position. Thankfully, as long as you don't make any sudden adjustments or moves, you're good to go. But it takes a while to reach orbit because of that lack of thrust. But once we get there, we are safe. Though there is a little concern that I have. You see, the amount of oxygen we have is higher than the amount of methane, which is not optimal at all. And I think that's something that the SpaceX rocket recently had bit of an imbalance from the looks of it, but in our case, it's not good, which means we're going to have a lot of fuel and it's going to be pointless. We can't do anything with oxygen by itself, So, but we'll see how far we can go. Now, the original space shuttles had a cargo bay that was around 18 meters long for storing things like the Hubble Space Telescope or spy satellites, so those kinds of things. Our version has a cargo capacity of around 35 meters long. That's a lot. And even though it's an absolutely insane amount of storage space, unfortunately, there is nothing inside. <laughs> and well, the reason is due to game performance. When you have a lot of engines, 
things tend to be very, very slow. The game was just at an absolute crawl. It's my fault, of course. I wanted to build big. And, well, inevitably, you need a lot of engines for that. <laughs> so, yeah, there wasn't really much FPS left for us to add things into the cargo bays. But that's fine. The shuttle is going to be the package, as well as the passengers, hopefully. With our dwindling fuel supply, it's now time to head to the moon. I created a maneuver node and initiated a short burn. Once the maneuver completed, I zoomed out and saw that we were unexpectedly in the northern region of the moon. Our orbit was probably a little angled due to the previous issues with fuel. However, visually it is a more aesthetically pleasing location, as we can see both Kerbin and the sun in one frame. I then repositioned the shuttle and initiated another burn to enter the lunar orbit and slow our descent. Though my concerns about fuel levels increased a lot, as it seemed we were definitely not going to head back to Kerbin, and well landing on the moon would probably be a challenge too, but I just pressed on regardless. So we continued descending, I initiated another short burn to decelerate once again, and then realized that the monopropellant fuel tank was empty. So this meant that the shuttle would take a very long time to make any turns and just control was going to be terrible. Thankfully, using the engine gimbals while burning, I was able to slowly adjust our angle. And at around 10,500 meters altitude, our worst fear came true. The methane fuel had run dry. <laughs> Only a tiny, useless amount of oxygen remained. We were now falling at a dangerous speed of 57 meters per second, and the shuttle would likely double that speed before impact. Now, my only hope was that the crash would somehow reduce our velocity, potentially saving the crew cabin. But, no. no there's nothing left. <laughs> there's nothing left. It's a failed mission, everyone. We at least did get to the moon, so that counts. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye.